Welcome to yet another solution video of May 2022. Uh, this one is Pure Math 3. In the first question, they are asking to us to solve this equation, which is a combination of natural log and uh, exponential. And uh, let's do it. So let me copy the question first. I don't know if it is visible that well or not. E to the power 2x plus 3 equal to 2x plus ln 3 okay so now our aim is to find the value of x so we'll first get rid of this ln so this e to the power 2x plus 3 will be left out here and the other side will become e to the power 2x plus ln 3 since we have to separate this x and we have to isolate x's, so I have to separate these and this. So we can write e to the power 2x plus 3 equal to e to the power 2x and then uh, multiplied by e to the power ln 3. Because the exponents are adding, the bases multiply. Okay. So e to the power 2x plus 3 and uh, here they are inverse of each other lin and exponential they cancel out so we are left with 3 e to the power 2x all right now we can bring this e to the power 2x to the other side so e to the power 2x minus 3 e to the power 2x equal to i'll take the number to the right side minus 3 the combination of these two will be minus 2 e to the power 2x because they are exactly same only coefficients are different this will be minus 3 here. Okay, we can cancel negatives on both sides. E to the power 2x becomes 3 over 2 and that gives us 2x equal to natural log 3 over 2 if we remove e from the other side and x is half lin 3 over 2. Are they saying exact? No. They are saying us to give answer in 3 decimal places. So let me evaluate this, um, getting 0 0.2027 and which we round off to 0 0.203. We are ready with the second question, which is solve this trigonometric equation between 0 to 360 should be the value of theta. Okay, so let me repeat the question again. 3 cos. 2 theta equal to 3 cos theta plus 2 and this cos 2 theta can be rewritten as there's an identity for it 2 cos square theta minus 1 and equal to 3 cos theta plus 2 so let's open this and make a quadratic equation out of this so 6 cos square theta minus 3 minus 3 cos theta minus 2 equal to 0. These two also taken to the left side. So 6 cos square theta minus 3 cos theta minus 5 equal to 0. So now we have this quadratic equation. We can use our calculators to find the values of two causes. Uh, I can use quadratic formula for this. You can use your calculator also. So, quadratic formula minus minus 3 plus minus square root b square minus 4 a c over 2a. So, what do we get? 3 plus minus square root 9 plus 24 times 5, 120 over 12 so we have two solutions now one is 3 plus square root 129 over 12 second will be 3 minus square root 129 over 12 so if I solve this one I get uh, 1.196 approximately and this one is negative 0 0.6964 Okay, we know that the cos theta cannot be more than 1, so this 1 is rejected, this 
is the one we will work on. It is a negative value of cos and between 0 and 360 these are the quadrants where cos is negative. So let's find cos inverse 0 0.6964 to find our theta. If you notice I have ignored negative because negative has given us quadrant so we will not write it we will just write positive if I put negative here I will not get an answer I want I want an acute angle alright so when I use my calculator I get approximately 45.9 and 45.9 that's what I will write here so we have two answers now first one theta 1 we start from 0 degrees and go to the line created by the first quadrant inside the first quadrant which is 180 minus 45.9 that is 134.1 but we need three significant figures rather they said uh, that the, if the angles are in degrees we can give answer up to one decimal place so let's write 0.1 degrees second answer will be 180 plus because it is going further to this line and it is crossing 180 so 180 plus 45.9 which is 225.9 degrees we are ready with the next one also the polynomial ax square plus x square plus bx plus 3 is denoted by this thing it is given that it is divisible by 2x minus 1 that means it's a perfect root so 2x minus 1 is a factor make it equal to 0 it becomes root so 1 over 2 is the root and when it is divided by x plus 2 remainder is 5 that means x plus 2 is not a factor we get a remainder of 5 so if it was a root we would make it equal to 0 so x is equal to minus 2 would be the root but if we apply this we'll get a remainder of 5 that's what they're saying so let's uh, substitute these where these roots into the equation to use remainder theorem okay so ax cube so ax cube first root i'm using the proper root 1 over 2 uh, plus 1 over 2 square plus b 1 over 2 plus 3 and the remainder is 0 because it is a perfect root so what do we get a over 8 here plus 1 over 4 plus b over 2 plus 3 is 0 let's get rid of the denominators by multiplying by 8 because 8 is the LCM of this particular uh, equation so what do we get uh, 8 will cancel out so a 1 over 4 multiplied by 8 is 2 b times 8 will be 4b then 24 equal to 0 so we get an equation a plus 4b equal to 24 plus 2 is 26 but when they go to the other side we get minus 26 this is equation number 1 let's talk about the other one which is not a root but we'll substitute it similarly a minus 2 cube plus ha not half <laughs> i have to undo this excitement okay minus 2 square plus b minus 2 plus 3 e not equal to 0 it is equal to 5 the remainder is 5 okay minus 8a plus 4 this negative will become positive because of the square minus 2b plus 3 equal to 5 minus 8a minus 2b plus 7 equal to 5 and if i bring this 7 to the right side we get minus 8a minus 2b equal to 5 minus 7 minus 2 let's divide whole equation by minus 2 because all of them are negative and all of them are even so we get a simpler version of this 4a plus b equal to 1 this is equation number 
two. So now uh, let's uh, use uh, let's isolate b here. B equal to one minus four a, so that I can substitute in equation number one. And let me substitute here. So a plus four times b is one minus four a now equal to negative twenty six. So a plus four minus sixteen a equal to minus twenty six. So a minus sixteen a is minus fifteen a. Four goes and because minus four to the right side, we'll get minus thirty here. A equal to minus thirty over minus fifteen positive two. And b we have here, we'll use it. B equal to one minus four times a. V equal to one minus eight, which is negative seven. We got a and b both. Question number four: The equation y of a particular function is given. It is given that the curve has one stationary point in the interval zero to half pi. Okay, one, only one. Find the x coordinate of this stationary point, giving your answer correct to three significant figures. Okay, for stationary point. dy over dx have to be equal to zero. So we'll differentiate this dy over dx since two parts are multiplying, which both have a variable x. So we'll use product rule. So cos cube x we will differentiate this one. We will not touch sin x. In second part, cos cube x will stay there, and we will differentiate. Sin x. So sin x square root of sin x can also be written as sin x to the power half. Just keep in mind while differentiating, this will be useful. So I'm going to differentiate this one first. So three cube will come in front, and the comp exponent of cos will go down by one, which becomes cos square now. And further, we have to differentiate the base, which is cos x. Differentiation of cos x is minus sin x. Okay, then we have square root sine x additional already, plus cos cube x stays cos cube x. Now this is here. So if I want to differentiate that, half will come in front, and sine x its power will go down by one. So half minus one is negative half, and then we have to differentiate. Sine x as well, which is cos x. So now we have a little complicated part here, but we can uh, simplify this by taking something common. So cos square is here, cos cube is here. So we can rather cos four. Let let's simplify combine if we can combine things. Three cos square x, and because of this negative, I will put negative in front, and sine x to the power. This is one. And this is half. One plus half, three over two. Plus cos to the power four x. These two give us cos to the power four x, and half is in front. And uh, sine x to the power minus half. So I was saying that we can factor this. So let's take the smaller of the two common. Cos square, cos four. So cos square comes as a common part. Sine to power three two sine to the power minus half sine to the power minus half is. Let's not write it here. Write outside. This is common. Now what is left in here? Minus three. Okay. Then we have uh, this is greater than this by how much? Uh, three by two minus minus half, which is adding here two. So basically, this will be sine square x when we take minus half common, because three over two minus minus half is square. So we can write square here. All right. Plus we have half this one cos to the power four cos square is also out, so cos square is left. And here sine x to the power minus half is already out, so no need to write it. We got it. 
Now, for stationary point, they're saying find the x coordinate of the stationary point dy over dx is equal to zero because at every stationary point, the tangent is a horizontal line, the gradient of horizontal line is zero, that's why dy over dx is zero. So that means this whole thing is equal to zero. That means individually cos square x will be equal to zero. This will also be zero. Sine x to the power minus half will be equal to zero. Then this minus three sine square x plus half cos square x will also be equal to zero. So let's look at them one by one. Square root both sides. Cos x equal to zero. So x equal to cos inverse zero. And the domain they said was from zero to half pi. So let's draw the graph of cos for zero, one, and minus one. We should always draw the graph that gives us good answer. So this is zero here. It is zero here. This angle itself is pi by two. So this is 0 from 0 to pi by 2. Pi by 2 is the place where we have uh, x equal to 0 but cos x equal to 0 but there is no equal sign here. If you see there is no equal sign that means we cannot count pi by 2. So no solution here. Let's talk about this one. It will be 1 over sin x to the power minus half equal to 0 to make this negative positive I've reciprocated and in no case a reciprocal can be zero whatever is the value of sine x it can never give you a zero because cross multiply also it will become zero one is not equal to zero this is also not giving us any stationary point uh, in our question itself they said there's only one stationary point yeah and we have to find x coordinate of that all right this will give us I think 3 sine square x equal to minus half cos square x. This is how we can rearrange this. Uh, divide both sides by cos square x. So cos square x gone here. This becomes minus 3 tan square x equal to negative half. Both are negative so we can cancel negative signs tan square x equal to 3 multiplies with 2 cross multiply 1 over 6 all right that means we square root both so tan x is plus and minus square root 1 over 6 all right odd kind of answer but yeah this is the answer now from 0 to pi by 2, that means we have to just focus on the first quadrant because this is 0, this is pi by 2 and in this quadrant tan is positive, that means negative is gone. We will not even look at negative. x is tan inverse square root 1 over 6 and in radians it gives us 0 0.387596. Which can be rounded off to 0 0.388. Did they ask anything else or only the x coordinate? Find the x coordinate of the stationary point giving three significant figure. That is the value of x.